If you don't think there's hope for the world, why bother going on? You keep going for family. I'm not family. No. Your cargo. These two characters kind of collide with each other and are forced to be together. And you could tell neither one of them wants it. And it's more explicit in the show than it was even in the game, because, you know, in the game, we're kind of finding it as, as we're making it. What, what are you doing? doing? Killing, Killing time. time. Well, what, what am, am I, I supposed, supposed to do? I'm sure you'll I'm sure figure, that you'll figure that out. Figure that out. Sometimes it's um, making sure we don't change things for the sake of changing them. We just felt the game did it so well, there was no reason to reinvent it. I had one singular goal with the show. Teach me something new about Joel. Because I felt like I went over that thing with a fine tooth comb, and I, I mean, what did I miss? Joel. Ellie! And... You are treading on some mighty thin ice here. Joel's relationships at the start of the story um, have everything to do with what motivates him, the loss of his daughter, and it's very painful. Very few things left in life to help him remember that he's an actual human being or that there's a real beating heart inside his chest which makes him capable of really, really dark things. And then he meets Ellie, who's even more like him than anyone else. Your dad's kind of a pessimist. I'm not my dad. dad. And Ellie is a character that will reignite the essence of his identity and purpose. You might not be her father, but you were someone's. Growing up in the Boston QZ, just like with a load of other kids, she has no sort of concept of a future, really, of like what to do with your life. She's just like existing in the everyday and making the best of it. When we first meet Ellie, she seems just like a bit of an Nice knife. Where'd you learn to do that? The circus. It's who she is, part of who she is for sure. Um, but it's also a bit of a, a friend. Her biggest fear is ending up alone. It's like she sort of always has been, and it's just this constant fear for her, which is sort of interesting. As soon as she finds out that she has this immunity, she feels like she has a purpose. Seeing Bella really blew me away. I feel so connected to her. It's like seeing Ellie, the video game character, come to life. Everybody Everyone I have cared for, for has either, has either died, died or, or left, left me. Both versions of the story, I think, ultimately have a similar conversation about love. What can you control and what can you not control? Joel cannot control the love that he has for his family and the love that develops for Ellie, but they are also the greatest threats to his survival because it means putting your life in danger on behalf of somebody else because you can't choose otherwise because of love. Joel and Ellie have become a metaphor for the connection a parent feels with their child. That is this very primal feeling that can override a lot of other motivations and goals. That relationship can go in reverse of like when you have a parent and you love them un unconditionally, you will do everything to protect them. And we get to see that expressed over and over and in more intense ways throughout the journey of The Last of Us. I don't look at the show as a comparison. I look at it as a companion. What they got the opportunity to do was explore those same emotional beats in a different way. This was Craig, Mason, and Neil Druckmann getting together and being like, how do we keep the integrity of this story and bring it to life onto screen for people who are gamers? And it feels like they honored the game in a huge way. It always feels like you're looking at this like a very interesting parallel dimension. And I think people that do experience both will get the richest version of that story. And these things can live side by side and speak to and enrich one another. This is just one way to experience the story. And here's this whole other way to experience the story.